Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are working on a viewer's generator. It is a model EF2000IS Yamaha inverter generator. So this was dropped off to me by a viewer of the channel. His name is Bruce, and Bruce, thank you so much. Uh, he had dropped this off to me because he had not touched this machine since Hurricane Sandy. He picked it up uh, shortly before that, and I believe Hurricane Sandy was 2013, and he ran this thing for seven days straight, and he put all the, he put the hour meter on here from US Carb, it's got 60, well, it had 60.1 hours when I first got it, and it did not look as nice as it does. I've done an extensive cleanup off the of camera, and he did have this converted to propane using the US carburation kit. Uh, but what they did not have at the time back then was they would actually take the carburetors out and they would actually drill out the carburetor and it would go into the airstream that way. Very similar to how the motor snorkel is. And basically what he wanted me to do was not only to clean it up really nice, drain the eight or nine year old, uh, very old fuel is smelt terrible like paint varnish, clean that out and get it running. And then uh, I told him, well, what do you want to do? Because there's nothing wrong with that drilled out carburetor. He's like, well, I want to be able to use gasoline again, because unfortunately with this drilled out carburetor, it was actually lacking. They remove, uh, let's see if I can get a picture of it. It does not have the idle pilot jet in there because of where it's located. Let me see if I can get a, you could probably see it a little better here. Yeah, so you could see how they go right into the carburetor there and it gets rid of the function on gasoline and he did not drain the fuel out there, but thankfully there was no gasoline in that bowl. What he asked me to do was to replace it with a brand new OEM carburetor, which these things go for very expensive. That's almost $200 for this because it does include the stepper motor on top of it there so i did install that and i was able to get everything nice and cleaned up it is now running perfectly on gasoline but since he still wants to have the tri-fuel kit we had to go and purchase the motor snorkel for this and i got this from us carburation this piece alone is about 80 to 90 dollars and he already has a lot of the other parts i'll show you what he's got so what he has here, the demand regulator he had mounted on the side here, and then the, the hose for the propane came out here. And what he was having, first he had a problem with how this was mounted. Initially, he did not have these extra spacers, so you had a hard time getting access to the primer bulb in the back there. However, it's pretty solid. It's not going anywhere. Normally, I would have put some angle irons here, but it's not really that big of a deal. It's actually on there quite solid. He also had the six foot NPSK kit and the way that he had hooked it up, he's got the quick disconnect on one side. He has the flare end on the other and then the primary regulator that you would normally find has the quick disconnect here. Not really the best way I would have done it, but he said that I want to go and get a whole new NPSK kit. He's going to bring me back the old parts because this is only six feet long. He wanted a 12 foot. And the only other modification that he wanted to do, now here's my NPSK kit for my other generator, and I just have the end where you need to use a wrench in order to get it on there. Not a big deal for me. Uh, and then I also have a quick disconnect here that goes to the demand regulator. That's on mine, he said he didn't need that. So here is his kit where, let me zoom out a little bit here, where he wanted the thumb nut to be able to put onto the tank very easily flare fitting and then the other flare fitting will go right to his demand regulator so that's his and it'll be a lot easier for him to take on and off tanks he uses a bunch of 20 pounders like that and that should be good for him and just to give you an idea of what that looks like so what we're going to do is we're going to install the motor snorkel here on top and i've already cleaned out everything in here as best i can uh, inside there was actually a very bad mouse nest that actually got inside where the exhaust chamber is and had to blast that out, had to vacuum out. It was made up of all these pieces of 
paper towels. I don't know how they got, they just brought it in and made their nest with it. But after cleaning all that out and cleaning out all the junk oil that was on the bottom here, it's pretty much cleaned up and ready to go. I'll get you guys set up here on a tripod and then what we'll go and do is install the motor snorkel first. And since everything else is already set up and done inside, we'll then route the hose for the motor snorkel out of the side cover there and then hook it up to the demand regulator, which I expect that the demand regulator's load block is gonna need a little tweaking. And we'll go ahead and load test it, make sure everything's good to go. And that's pretty much it. There's not really too much to install the motor snorkel kit on here. And since a lot of this was already done, this should be a pretty quick and easy install here. And I probably eliminated about two hours worth of cleanup and disassembly and i do apologize if you guys have any questions about this particular generator i have the same exact one and i mounted my demand regulator a little differently than him but if there's ever any questions about this particular generator i'd be more than happy to uh, talk about it and show you guys if you have any other specific questions so let's jump into it all right, now that what we have ourselves set up, what I first have to do is take the two 10 millimeter nuts off of the air intake in here. And I'll try my best to keep my hands out of the way so that you can see what I'm doing. I've already had these off once before since I had to replace the carburetor. But what we're gonna do is just take the air intake tube off here and I'm doing this kind of carefully because I don't want to lose those 10 millimeter nuts this has to come off the breathing tube and that's all it is it just comes right out now with the motor snorkel they tell you when you install this to only tighten it one half turn after it's been secured because otherwise it is going to be a problem. You could actually wind up damaging it. And what we're gonna do is just get this in the right orientation. That's basically how it's gonna install. Let's see if I can get a good picture of that. There we go. As you can see, this will essentially replace the gasket. Now, there is the choke plate, which if I'm trying to feel on the other side of the machine here, where that is located. But you could see that when I close it, it will crush that probe and still allow it to operate on gasoline. But now that's installed correctly, we're going to go and reinstall the breather tube and tighten everything up. doing everything by hand. That way I know it's not over tightened. All right, so those are tightened by hand. It's about as best as I can do it. I'm gonna put this little breather tube back in. That's done by hand. And once I get it hand tight where I can't do it anymore, I'll just do one half turn. And it doesn't need to be that tight. The trick is not to crush it. So now this is installed correctly. And now we can proceed to put the cover back on and get this mounted properly. Hope you guys can get a better shot here as you're seeing it with a little bit more light. Uh, but I've moved the snorkel to where it's not kinking. I just routed it up and around and then the hose is gonna go out the side here. We'll zoom out a little bit more and give you guys an idea of how this was gonna go. Here is the 
side with the hole and then this hose is going to go right through like that but it looks like i might have to make the hole in here just ever so slightly larger because this is a larger diameter hose compared to the original over here so i'll go ahead and do that all right we got the hole drilled a little bit larger so now i can actually get the tube to come through the side panel here and we got more than enough slack to work with now the only other thing that i did have to get for him was he was missing the mounting screws to this side piece and i picked them up from a yamaha dealer so they're the exact size and what we're going to do is put all this back together and then hopefully the load block will not be too far out of adjustment where I can actually get this to run perfect on propane. So we're going to go ahead and put this back on and we'll get it down on the ground for testing. All right, we'll just hook up the NPSK kit, which is just a flare fitting. You don't need to put any kind of Teflon tape on that. And we may have to adjust this load block here. So let's get that down on the ground and see how well it runs. Here's the overall setup. I have a Y splitter on this particular tank because I was running the heater here inside the garage. It is a little windy out, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this start up with just the setting on the load block now and if it works great then we'll go and proceed to put a load on it and see how well it runs that if i need to go and adjust the load block then we'll start from scratch and adjust it from the beginning and making sure that it can be as lean as possible to prevent any kind of problems with the cylinder head we have a heat gun that's 600 watts on low, and then I believe 12 or 1400 watts on high. So we should be able to load it up almost all the way, but let's go ahead and get it started. Propane's already hooked up. Purges the airline.
an L. So this is out about three or four threads. If I bring it in a little bit, it'll actually start to haunt the circle a little bit more like before. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to call that a success. The amount of work I did off camera, and again, I do apologize that I did not have a chance to record all that. I've, I did have a lot of projects going on, but I wanted this video to be about just installing the motor snorkel. Obviously, the making it look nice, so that the way it didn't look like this when I first got it. And a big thank you to Bruce for letting me go ahead and feature it here on the channel. And I hope that this will serve you very well for years to come. And just like you had wanted, you wanted the thumb nut in order to connect to a tank much easier. And everything is pretty much ready to go. And if you wanted to use gasoline, you can. Uh, the only suggestion that I would say, um, not that it's a big deal, but uh, keep the uh, vent here off and also keep the fuel petcock off when you are using propane. 
So before I was having problems with the engine actually running too rich because there was actually still gasoline inside the carburetor bowl because before I was recording the video, I actually was running it exclusively on gasoline to make sure there was no problems before I reinstalled the motor snorkel for, for, for propane operation. And that's why I had this all the way in and it was still running. Once that res residual gasoline burned off, then it actually died out. That I, that's when I had to stop the video. Restarted it, got it to about three to four threads here, and now it's running excellent. And the main idea with propane is to make sure that you are running as lean as possible. Uh, the leaner air fuel mixture you run on a gaseous fuel like propane or natural gas, the cooler the engine is going to run. It is the opposite with gaseous, uh, gasoline, I should say. Gasoline, the leaner the air fuel mixture, the hotter the combustion temperatures, and then the richer the mixture, the cooler the combustion chamber. That is kind of counterintuitive, but that's why I was trying to get this to be running set as lean as possible. That way we have an optimal air fuel ratio for running on propane. I'm gonna end the video here. I know I didn't show quite a lot of the focus stuff here. I have the same exact machine. If anyone is interested in converting this to propane, if there's any questions, please let me know. I will see you guys on the next video.